This is pure sex. After Randy Marsh was the one who packaged this, <laughs> all the ectoplasm everywhere, Isaiah pointed something out. These little pieces are a little too long for this tank. Fortunately, that's why they're like this. Fuel pumps do move up and will have enough room for the little filters right on the bottom. This will replace that. So everything will probably get capped off except for the vent. Now that I've begun working on the PDM and all of the electronics to the vehicle, Isaiah has begun working on fabricating on top of my shit. My stand is gonna get the golden touch. He's adding on all of the oil system so we can actually fire it up this weekend on that stand. The dry sump tank first, then we've gotta mount the see-through filter. It's, I think it's called the see-through filter. Oh, he calls it clearviewfiltration.com, but uh, they actually call it see-through filter. We've got the radiator intercooler coming in tomorrow. It's just gonna be a flurry of activity. I didn't want to release a video yesterday just because it was a lot of research and development. I was reading the entire manual for the race pack, which uh, if I, don't, I haven't introduced this yet in the videos. I introduced this on Instagram. This shows you just a hint of what I'm about to do. And little buttons. Buttons with three light indicators. Weatherproof, waterproof, probably volcano-proof. If, if this is pure sex. What this is, is it's called a PDM, Power Distribution Module, Power Distribution Management. It's a solid state unit, so there are no fuses to blow and there are no relays. It's all done inside of this unit. It'll handle up to, I think, 120 amps. But if you're wondering what would you use that for, this is what answers all of that. Oh, ho, 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 ho. not only is this thing pre-wired with these wires here, the wires themselves are labeled for what you can use them for. Radiator fans, line lock if you wanted that, trans brake, and grounds obviously, <laughs> shutting down the whole thing all at once. And then these are some more lighting, brake lights, switches, inputs, fuel pumps, all of that can be wired into this unit. The only thing that you do not wire into this is ignition. And by that, I mean the actual, actual spark plug coils are sitting right now. Those don't go through that unit. I thought they would, but that's one thing that draws a lot of very freakish amount of current up and down. If I wanted to, I could start the car, like you see with race car guys, pressing and holding one of these buttons or setting this button up using this thing, turn the starter for say, what, three, five seconds, something along those lines. But I want this car to be as RX-7-like as possible. On the stand, I'm gonna have this, and sure enough, one of these up here is ignition. There's a lot of learning involved. I spent all night reading the entire manual for this. The PDM is going to sit right here. Dream Team is the Adaptronic, the PDM, and then the AEM dash. We'll see if we can fit all those on there. The AEM dash will be a very clear display of everything that's going on in the ECU. They do have crossover. All three units have crossover in terms of like roles that they can play. It's probably the sickest way of getting a four rotor started in the middle of the air. On top of all of that, I got a little baby cheap fuel cell to put the super expensive fuel pumps into. Oh, and I got another package coming. That works, I got another package. I needed these fittings for the oil system. In I was in a hurry, so I just purchased them straight from Summit. They're all weird angles. You can see they're all 120 degree angles, not just 90s. Oh, this is perfect. This is absolutely perfect. Let me show you what this one's for. This fitting is because of you guys being Hawkeyes and noticing that this one was going to hit the steering rack. I immediately purchased a 60 degree angle. Crisis avoided right there. Wow, look at that. That gets really close to being on the same angle as these. So maybe we'll run with that aesthetic. This one is now a boner in sweatpants and needs to come down on the same angle. This is a little bit of an issue. Summit accidentally sent me a 10 AN instead of a 12 AN. That one's a little bit of a challenge. I only have two of this higher angle. It's not a big problem for starting the engine in the air, but the correct well, all three of these need to be up on an angle. I might purchase three 150s. These are 120s, because look at that. I might have more angle that I can get this just away from the chassis. This, on the other hand, is kind of cool. They didn't have more of these in stock. This one is for here. These slight angles make all the difference. It's not that it won't work with 90s, but just imagine the hose coming up from here and down there. It's nice. 180 degree bend on the hose. If you start going up out here and then have to hook it up here, 
you start getting into some weird gnarly shit. While Isaiah goes and works on adding this extra pole for the oil system, I'm gonna take off my metal plate meant for all the electronics so I can work on that separately. I had to clean this up because it's just getting gnarly. It is getting nuts how much stuff we're trying to manage all at once. This is the PDM. I suspect I'll probably have all the cables going towards the back of the engine. I just want them away from heat. We will have the battery plug right into this, like this. The battery will then, mind you, this is gravity's going that way. It looks more like this. So the battery will be on the ground, on the, uh, the base of the engine stand. This will be the distribution point for any other electronics, not the starter. The starter will have its own line because that's just nuts. These plug into the back right there. There's also something where I'm gonna kind of segment things away. I'm not gonna depin them this time. We're just gonna keep them coiled up and away. Most of these are not needed, really, at the moment. This, this is not a car, this is a engine stand. We'll probably have some sort of manual switch to shut everything off. Clearly we'll have the fuel pumps, which will also be on the ground. These will go like such into there. This is what's nice is this unit has multiple 20 amp circuits and then tons of 10 amp circuits, and they must already know, hey, fuel system is gonna take 40 amps. That's perfect, 38 amps peak, two of these, and we can watch that in the PDM. Brake lights, ignition, starter. I love how beefy this wire is. This just feels so good. Brake pedal switch, clutch neutral safety switch. You know, a lot of these are inputs, and that's very important to keep these in this coil. You see a lot of race cars where they do flip switch, flip switch, 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 prime, 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 and then finally a button to start it. I'm gonna keep it simple. I want the ECU to control it like a normal car. You know, fuel pumps don't need to be manually turned on, and the reason why they can be manually turned off, I don't wanna turn off my fuel pumps. I don't wanna even have to worry about my fuel pumps. I want the system to control it. I, I might have my uh, flippy switch for the headlights to pop up and everything. At worst case, I can just press one of these buttons. A lot of these things I won't be using uh, definitely won't have wipers. Oil fan might come in handy, but again, that's if, if temperatures are rising, which this unit can do. This unit actually has temperature inputs and it can control some of that logic. The thing that that matters most on, I would love to reduce the complexity of this car. I could almost eliminate this kit right here. It'll trigger fans or it'll trigger the pump inside of the water system for this right here. I would actually love for not this, but this to control the whole pump system, this is awesome. It works well in the Corvette. It's just one more thing to wire up and kind of have in duplicate, no need. We could have the PDM control the water pump. So here's what I'm thinking for the ignition. This was the little thing I started working on for the three rotor and it's solid, but we can update this considerably. I'm gonna have a relay for the ignition and these bigger, beefier relays can handle the ignition level of power we're gonna need. We'll still have the ignition be controlled by these two. If this dream team couldn't get any better, I don't know how, here we are. The AEM dash. This is very clearly meant to tell us humans what's going on inside of these machines. That will run through a CAN bus to the Adaptronic. My wiring harness is set up for it. I will still mount that because that's gonna be pretty awesome to see all of this information available at once. You and the guy she told you not to worry about. Well, yesterday was a day of half-assed things in terms of getting a lot of research done and just general small piddly crap. You just got to get a lot of that stuff done. This is a real build that really does happen. Well, yesterday was all of that. Today is beautiful. Today is a beautiful day. All of the oil system mounted properly. This feels really good. It looks like some sort of, I don't know, it looks like it can make meth. It's either gonna make horsepower or meth. I can't tell which one this machine can do and I'm okay with either at the moment. We've got all of the oil system on. Tomorrow is probably one of the most important days in the channel because while I'm working on the engine, Isaiah is working on the car. I'll probably separate it into two videos because it, logically we're both gonna be doing such vastly different things. It's important to keep the story straight. Isaiah is gonna be cutting off the front of the car. I am gonna be working on starting the engine. There are a lot of major steps needed to be done right now. One of them is the electronics, as I kind of shared with you earlier. Between the last shot and now, I got all of the holes drilled for the PDM. So sit like that. And then the little buttons go like that. 
and then the Adaptronic go like this. I realized a couple things. I won't be able to put the AM dash on this piece because it can't fit down here. Down here is where the transmission is right behind it, and this is a device where you plug in to the back. It's gonna go right into the transmission. I've been busting my ass on a lot of the small details that end up being big details. For example, you hear it right here first. Uh, I was able to fit a quad plate clutch into the T2 bell housing. Quad plate, massive clutch. Worked on all those details today. That's on its way from Australia. We'll talk about that more later. I got all the metal figured out for what we're gonna be using. I'm looking at the camera. What we're gonna be using in the hole for that, all the tube chassis. Got all of the electronics figured out. I spent late last night with Natter. We finished the version of the oil pump mount as well as the alternator mount that will be in my hands this evening. It's just go time. I went through and sorted all of the wire for the PDM by wires that we're gonna use now and wires that we're gonna use later. You can see that right here. Everything that's on my wrist, those are all lines that we're gonna be using now. The ones that aren't being used are things like brake lights. There are no brakes on this train. On this crazy, crazy trade. Don't need them yet, but I can't delume it because I have brakes, just not uh, on an engine stand. <laughs> I'll be picking my brother up in about an hour, but let me show you the work that Isaiah's already busting out. This is just quick stuff for him, and it ends up being wonderful work for me. Whole oil system all mounted up. He's gonna start bracing this tomorrow morning. I'm not worried about it, to be honest. It'll shake a little bit, but it's gonna have, what, three pounds? No, seven pounds of oil. Not really a big deal to me, but he is going to brace the engine. Because if you guys want to see $60,000 oh, plus now, uh, shake, uh, and that's not a high price escort. Worse yet, it wobbles front and back. And uh, guess what's going to happen when we go to start it? That's definitely going to shake. It's not a huge deal to me, but it is, as we go to idle it, why, why not? You have a fabricator here, why not have him brace this? The reason I haven't braced it is because I'm going to have shelves. You take a part off, set it on the shelf. Perfect example, got a nice transmission sitting by the door if somebody wants to steal it right now. I wanna be able to take the bell housing off and then set it down. Each piece being something that's functional, not only as a testing, but a storage unit. That's another reason why this whole front area will have oil coolers, intercooler, and radiator, is if we have to take it out of the car, say we're gonna do some sort of engine out service or God knows what we're gonna to do to the car, pop it out and put it in its storage bin spot. There's just shit on the ground. This is how my brain works. I'm trying to be a better person by building a stand for all of it. Tomorrow, we run the fuel lines, oil lines, terminate all of the data lines, and I think what we'll do is prime the oil system for tomorrow's video. I hope the following video after that is the first test fire, but if there's more content and challenges between that, I can't guarantee that. Obviously, I don't know the answer to that. That's the order of operation. Some of the guys asked me on Patreon, will you be live streaming it? I may set up the laptop. It won't be the GoPro because I need the GoPro for you know, the actual start for the video. But I'll use the shitty webcam here and have it kind of live streaming in the background. Don't let me fool you. It is a boring process to what we're about to do. Editing it for time is how it works. For you Patreon guys, the only downside to that is that it's not as interactive as the, all the other ones are where I'm 90% of the time reading comments and responding in Q&A. This is going to be more so just observing adventures as they go and it is slow it is very slow but hey you guys get to join along